All right, guys. So we are going to continue talking about data today. Um, so we've talked about a few different things with data. So remember, data is just information, right? So sometimes we can take a survey and we can get data from um, a survey that we've taken. Uh, and we can represent it in a few different ways. We can represent it with a tally chart like we see up here. We can represent it with a picture graph or we can represent it with a new way called a bar graph. So we know a tally chart has tallies that show the information. A picture graph has pictures that show the information. And a bar graph has uh, these bars. So these um, little chunks right here that show us uh, what our information is. So a couple of important things about a bar graph. One thing that's important is that we have a title in our bar graph. We wanna make sure we understand what's being represented here. And then we have uh, a label here that tells us what's being counted. So in this case, it's the number of people, right, that like these certain breakfast foods. And then we have the things, the categories that we are, um, that we're graphing. So in this case, it's toast, cereal, and eggs. It's the food, okay? Um, there are two different ways that you can show a bar graph. You can show it horizontally, meaning sideways, left to right, or you can show it vertically, meaning up and down, okay? Either way is um, an appropriate way to show the bar graph. It doesn't matter which way you show it. Um, so just like a picture graph, we are going to take the information in our tally chart and we're going to put it in the bar graph. So I can see that if there are four people who like toast, then I'm going to graph one, two, three, four bars in my bar graph, um, or rectangles that make up the, the one bar. Um, I can see over here that I have these numbers. So these numbers represent um, my scale, which is what I'm counting by. Um, I want to make sure that I notice what I'm counting by. So if I go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm obviously counting by 1s. But as we start to get really good at bar graphs, we may see a scale that's counting by 2s or 10s or 100s. So it's really important that you pay attention to that scale right there. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do an example. Let's do this example down here. So I have some information in a tally chart. So I'm looking at favorite muffins of people. So this is a survey that someone has taken and they've figured out um, how many people like all these different kinds of muffins. So looking over here at my bar graph, I have a title. I have my label, which is what I'm counting, which is the number of people. And then I have my muffin type, which are the categories are blueberry, strawberry, lemon, and cherry. So let's go ahead and fill in our bar graph. Let me pick a color here. Let's pick blue. Okay, and I'm going to um, start to need a little bit bigger um, color in these rectangles to form these bars. So blueberry was four, so I'm going to fill in one, two, three, four bars. Oh, Miss Hardgrove, we're getting a little out of control there. Okay. So we've got four people that like blueberry muffins. So I see that my end of my bar is even with the four, okay? Um, let's look at strawberry. So two people like strawberry, so I'm gonna color in one, two bars. Why is that so light? I'm not sure. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so I have, I, and I see that the end of my bar is even with two. Okay, lemon. Let's look at lemon. So one person likes lemon, so I'm only gonna draw in one lemon box. And I see that my bar is even with the number one. Okay, it's a little to the left, but that's okay. Um, and then let's look at cherry. So five people like cherry, so I'm gonna color in five boxes. One, two, three, four, five boxes. So let's look at this for a second. What information can I get from this? Well, I see that the category with the biggest bar, with the bar that goes furthest this way, and if this were tilted up and down, it would be the tallest bar. Um, but since it's sideways, you can look at the one that extends the furthest, and that is obviously going to be the most popular muffin flavor. The bar that is the smallest, which in this case is lemon, is going to be the smallest, I mean the least favorite uh, muffin flavor. So that is a bar graph for you. Um, so let's think about how are bar graphs different from picture graphs? Well, we've already talked about how they're the same. So they're the same because they both show um, sections of a graph that are um, taken up either by coloring it in or with a picture. But it's different because I have this scale here and I'm really looking at the size of the whole bar, 
okay? That's where bar graphs become helpful. So you can very quickly see cherry's the most popular, lemon's the least popular. You can still see that on a picture graph, but it's a little bit easier to see on a bar graph. All right, guys, thank you for watching.